All right, we have made it halfway through. I hope that you're starting to feel a little bit of a benefit from your morning beverage and your breathing techniques. And if you're not feeling any different, then hang on and continue to do those consistently. And I promise that it will be worth your efforts to keep up with those. So today, this is my favorite topic because I just love to eat and I love food so much. And honestly, when I realized, when I learned that I could heal my autoimmune issues, by eating. It was like the best news ever. <laughs> so I hope that you can be encouraged because I know that this can be the most difficult part is changing those habits that have been ingrained for so long. But I hope that you can know that this can actually be a very positive thing and it doesn't have to be that difficult. It doesn't have to um, restrict you from, from delicious foods or things that, that make you happy. It can actually do the opposite of that. So I just want you to know that and let you know that I'm excited about this one. I could truly spend 10 hours sharing recipes and talking about the nutrition part. It really is the cornerstone to um, how my clients really see progress. So just know that this is just the tip of the iceberg on things that are available to you to eat. Um, but I just wanted to keep it very simple for this one. And I'm just going to share three different things today um, of ways that you can incorporate some of those foods that I listed in the resource guide. So the nutrients that are in that guide I list that I listed were um, iodine, selenium, B vitamins, and um, zinc. So I want to start with iodine because this one can be a little bit controversial, just like if you research any nutrition information, if you've ever done that, you understand how one article can say one thing's good for you, the next one can say it's terrible for you, so it can be difficult to maneuver your way through all of that information. And I will say too that everyone's nutritional needs are different, and so what works for one person isn't necessarily going to work with some, for someone else. So that is important to keep in the back of your mind. But what I want to share as a whole that we can all benefit from is the idea of moving closer to a whole food diet. So the more we're eating foods that have not been processed, that have not had things added to them or taken out of them, that are as close to the original source as possible, that's when you're going to get the the most broad spectrum of nutrients and in the best form that your body can actually utilize. I am not a huge fan of isolated nutrients, for instance, like a synthetic form of vitamin C in a capsule form, um, because your body knows how to process food. For instance, this sweet potato has a ton of vitamin A in it, but it doesn't just have vitamin A. It has other vitamins and minerals that help, that work synergistically with that vitamin A, that help your body absorb that that vitamin. So when you're taking a synthetic form, it doesn't have all those other things in it, and your body isn't necessarily going to be able to use that. There is a time and a place for supplements. I take a couple myself, and I do recommend some to some of my clients, but overall, the more you can get it from your food, the better off you're going to be. So that's just kind of a a blanket statement for everyone. The more we can move to that, the better. And then within that big, that bigger framework, your nutritional needs are going to vary um, from person to person. That's just, there's no, everybody's body's different. So that's just something to keep in mind. But with the iodine, the that's where I was going with that. The controversy with that is that some, some research shows that you can get too much iodine if you have a certain type of thyroid imbalance. Um, versus others. So that's something to just keep in mind is to know um, mostly that happens if you're taking a really concentrated fo supplement form. So what I want to share today is a food form of that, which is safer. You're, you're not going to run the risk of getting too much necessarily um, by taking the food form, but definitely um, check with your doctor if you're not sure about the iodine or do a little bit of research on that on your personal situation. So Sea vegetables, I don't know if this is a totally foreign concept to you or not, it's not something that's typically on the grocery list, so I want to show you how to use this. And so I've taken this out. This is kombu or kelp. Um, there you go. You can see what it looks like. And this is what it looks like. It looks like seaweed. Doesn't look super appetizing, probably. And you can eat this. You can put it in salads. You can soak it in water so it kind of rehydrates. But I'm going to assume that most of you are not super thrilled about eating a sea vegetable. So I'm going to tell you a way you can get the nutrients from this without having to eat it. 
when I boil a pot of rice or quinoa or millet, which are all great gluten-free greens to incorporate, by the way, um, I throw in a little sprig of this kombu. And what happens when the, when the um, grain is boiling, it's extracting those nutrients from, from the, the sea vegetable into the food. And so when you're done boiling, you can just throw this away and eat the grain and you're getting a high amount of those nutrients that have come out of it and you just, it doesn't even change the flavor of the food. So there's an easy way to get this in a good natural form of iodine. Another nutrient that I listed on the guide was selenium, which is a great, um, it protects your thyroid from toxins. It's a great antioxidant, very, very crucial for thyroid health. Um, so, uh, Brazil nuts are a great source of selenium. It's even recommended that you don't eat more than two per day because you can exceed um, the recommendation, the recommended amount of selenium. So if you can get one or two selenium, or I keep calling them selenium nuts. I guess that could be a name for them, but Brazil nuts. Um, it is, it's just like a powerhouse um, for selenium and for your thyroid. So one easy way that I get selenium in, and also on that guide I listed was uh, pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds, which are high, um, together they're high in zinc, zinc and vitamin E and healthy fats and fiber and protein. So I'll mix a, a homemade trail mix together with Brazil nuts. These are some dark chocolate chips and some dried fruit like raisins or apricots, things like that, with some nuts and seeds. And I'll mix, I'll put it in a mason jar. I use mason jars for everything. You can put it in a bag or any container that you have and eat, eat on it, snack on it throughout the week. It's a great way to get a broad spectrum of vitamins and minerals. One note I will say on that is to try to not eat the roasted and salted form of the nuts because what happens when it is roasted at that high heat level, then the oils in the nuts start oxidizing and that can actually cause harm to your cells rather than nourishing them. So I know that can be a little tricky because like mixed nut packages are usually roasted and salted. So don't throw away the ones that you have in your house right now, but just keep, in mind, keep that in mind and try to um, purchase raw, the raw form of those in the future because they have more of the nutrients intact and the oils are not oxidized. So that's just something to keep in mind. Speaking of the sweet potato, I've been doing this every week for years. I just slice them up and I bake them um, at 350 degrees for 20 to 30 minutes and I'll put coconut oil, cinnamon, and a little bit of sea salt and it's delicious. It almost solves my sweet tooth. So after dinner, sometimes I'll eat that and then I won't want dessert. It's great as a side to a meal. It's great as a snack. There's so many ways that you can eat that. So that's just a good way to get a lot of vitamin A and some other um, things that were listed on that guide. One thing that I wanted to name that I'm not, they don't have out in front of me, but it's definitely one of the number one things I recommend um, people starting with. It's a great way to get um, just tons of nutrition packed into your body in in a short amount of time, and that is doing a green is drinking a green smoothie, and that might that might sound so disgusting to you, or maybe you've tried that, but I want to share a way, and I have you could ask anyone I recommended this to, and they they will tell you you do not taste the greens if you add enough fruit. I've never had someone. Um, Basically, every time I recommend this, people say, you're right, like it tasted so good. And and if you do taste the greens, then you just need to add a little bit more fruit and don't be afraid of the sugar in the fruit. Um, it's it, it's it can be very, very good for you. So what I do, just an easy way to incorporate this, or a, a really simple recipe that I would recommend is doing one banana, a cup of frozen fruit, of any kind. I like mango because it makes it really creamy. You could do mixed berries. You could just do blueberries, whatever you like. And then a handful of mixed greens or spinach or kale. Um, kale sometimes is controversial as well for thyroid disease because it is a cruciferous vegetable. So do a little bit of research on that and what you think. It's, the reason it can be controversial is it's, some research shows that it um, depletes iodine levels. I know it gets so controversial, but I personally um, think that if you're eating a broad spectrum of nutrients, then you're then you're okay to be eating 
the kale and the broccoli and things like that. But that is that is my opinion, and I definitely want you to make sure that you do the research on that um, for what's best for you. So if you don't, if you're if you want to be cautious about that, maybe don't add kale to your smoothie. Do spinach or romaine or mixed greens of some other kind. So if you and then just add a little bit of water and blend it, and it's so good. So that could either replace a breakfast, or that could be something that you t that you drink before a heavier breakfast. Just make it work for you. Maybe it's a great um, midday snack for you, or um, before dinner, whatever, wherever you can get it in. I highly recommend that. If you are getting a green smoothie in your day and this homemade trail mix in your day, then imagine you're getting just a huge amount of vitamins and minerals and protein and fiber and healthy fats that your body needs and you're gonna be miles ahead of most people just by doing those two things. So I hope you understand how simple that can be and how it can be tasty and, and really um, make a big difference in your energy and your digestion. Tomorrow we are going to talk about endocrine disruptors. So like we mentioned yesterday, your thyroid is a part of your endocrine system, just like your adrenal glands. And there are things in our environment that we use on our bodies that actually disrupt our endocrine system and keep it from functioning properly. So tomorrow we're going to talk a, a little bit about what some of those things are and how we can start to replace and reduce those things to, to free up the burden on our endocrine system so that it can function the the best way possible. So let me know, hit reply, let me know what food you want to try, not necessarily this week, I know you may have to go to the store, but um, which one you're gonna try to incorporate in the weeks to come, and I will look forward to our video tomorrow.